Hello, friends. Hello, Hardies. We're back. Look, I've got my official. Deb has her shirt, her hoodie. It's beautiful. And it's I have my official. Cold here. What happened? It's cold here. Is it? It's kind of getting cold here, too. It's like 38 degrees today. So raise your hand, even though I can't see you. Do you know who this person is? This is Deb Johnston. She's been on before. And you're the, well, you're the admin to what, what fan page? Uh, when Calls the Heart on Hallmark. Yes. I inherited it. You did. And how many fans are on there? Right now, there's about 49,000. A little Is over there... that. It probably started off with about 59,000, and we've gotten rid of that many. You had to um, clean up a little bit. You have 49.1. And this yep. is it. And um, it's a good place to be. I think people, if they don't know about it, should join it. I had someone say that this was their favorite Facebook page because I allow everything. And if they only knew, you know. <laughs> no, we don't allow everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things I do draw the line at, but. No, it's I, I do. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell someone they can't tell me that they're a fan of whoever they're a fan of yeah. because that, that's that's just what it is. Right. So everybody, you could be you could be a Rosemary and Lee fan, you could be a Nathan fan, you can be a, a Lucas fan, you could be an Elizabeth fan. It doesn't matter. Just a when calls the heart, Joseph yeah. fan, whatever we have there, Henry and 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 all because it says when calls the heart. Um uh -huh. I feel like it's a page that without mentioning any names should be how that page is. <laughs> Wait, what? So they don't, we don't censor on that page. Oh, right, right. And I feel like that's important. You shouldn't be censoring. And we know that that happens, Right. but, but this is a good page. So if you're, you're not on it, Robin says she loves it. I hope you're on Robin. Oh no, this happened to me again. Why this happened the other day where it's clear. And I don't know why it does that to me. What's it? So that means for me, when I cast, like for instance, this up, it's clear. I can't really see the background. It's not white. And I don't know why or how that happens. It might be white for you, but it's not for me. So it's very hard for me to read certain things. Well, I didn't see any of the, any of the comments at all until I, I picked instead of private chat, I did comments. I'm like, oh, good. That's good. All right. And so we've got Christina. She says, I'm on it. It's a great site. And people are here saying hello. Well, hello, everyone. So um, I wanted, I thought that what we would do is I, oh, when I have my hearties on, I had Brian on and we, I also met with Nikki Longnecker. There's you. We have another Nikki coming on after you. It's, it's fun for us to learn because we all have a different story. How it is you, you became a hearty. I was at a friend's house at Christmas time. I was watching the Christmas movie with Ryan Pavey and Aaron Cahill, where he go, he comes comes up yes. front. And I it, a, a good a, one. right, it is, and it's you're right. And a commercial came on, and I was like, "Is this a period piece?" And it was for season eight, and it had Elizabeth playing with a ring, and she was writing. And then they showed the, the Mountie and then they showed Chris or Lucas. And I, and so I thought, well, this looks like something I might like. So I went home and I saw that season eight was just, was starting, was going to start, but they were redoing season seven. So I, it was in the, I missed the first couple. So I started watching and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. This is pretty good. And I found the first couple episodes of seven and I said to myself, said, I, I don't need to do one through six, do I? Yeah. Okay. Well, I bought one through six and then the less, then now it's just history. You know, now I know better than anything. So. Yes. And um, you, you like you, I was going to say brainwashed. <laughs> it's been a long day. No brainwashing here. So you binge watched for how long did it take you to get all those seasons in? Well, I'm retired, so not long. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's you know you get it, it's, seasons two was a little different because uh, there's so there's only seven or eight episodes and there's a lot of um, two you know, like a two hour movie yeah. thing. Yes, but I it didn't take me long at all because it was it, it held my interest. It was it was interesting, but it was in it was I was on I wasn't on any of these pages. I had no idea what was going on. I 
I could figure out that Jack was going to die. I, I knew I just I could see how it was going. Um, and now it, to this day, every time they're in their little their little little backboard or buckboard thing, and they're they're driving around the corner, I'm like, "Bye, Jack. Nice knowing you. Not going to see him again." So yeah, I know, sad. But um, it it I mean I think I got it done before season eight started. I think so. You were all set and prepared. Yeah. So you were, what is it? Baptism by fire. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Basically, basically. And now I'm starting to watch it again, and, but I'm, I'm kind of, um, has hes not hesitant, but it's taken me a while because I know what's going to happen after season nine. And I, and, and we'll talk about that. I haven't gotten there yet, but I, we'll I, I but I, it's, I'm in season four and that's my, that's one of my favorite seasons. Oh, so. good. We're going to talk about that. Hold that thought for a minute. So Minnie's on and she said, I just joined the group and I hope you all accept me. So Minnie is on there waiting to become one of our hardies on when calls the heart on Hallmark. So, all right, she's Minnie. Gonna have to wait. She's going to have to wait till we get off of this. Yes. I'll look Unless at you can do it. I'll, yeah. I'm going to look at your profile. <laughs> and <laughs> Kathy says, Oh, it's working now. Hi, Deb and Roxanne. I appreciate your neutral, uh, neutrality. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to join that page. Thanks. Good. Good. <laughs> and Just make sure you answer all the questions. Yes, please. because you'll get declined. I but if decline you get it. declined and I decline you because there's parts that you didn't answer, I'll mark that so you could see. Um, if you don't flat out do anything, I'll just say decline. Um, Minnie's also saying you need to see all the episodes. I love this from 2014. And it's true. And she has. Deb, you've even gone back and seen things repeatedly, right? Um, probably six or seven times. Yeah. Yes. So you're like an expert. I can, and I can, I can quote it. I'm, I'm pretty good with the dialogue. Excellent. Rona says, been watching from the start. Yeah, like me to the movie too. You and I, Rona, we've talked about this. Yeah. But I have a question about the movie. Okay. How many talk. of you really think that movie had a lot to do with what is going on now? Well, there's actually more than one movie. So well, are you, are you, so Kathy and I, let, let's hold this thought for a second. Kathy and I, when we had this gap and we were waiting for nine, we had all this time. So we went back to the movie, the pilot, and then we kept going through every season and what we learned from each season and having someone from that season on and chat with us. So are you talking about the movie where um, the actress, oh, I can't even forget, I forget all the, the names. The only one there, the only one there that you're going to recognize is Lori. Yes. She's, and, and it's Lori Laughlin. And she, okay. was, she was, she was Abigail Stanton actually. So I it's, the, it's the one where the sister, where she goes out into the house to try to get a feel for it and the bees attack her the and bees, all that. Okay. Yes. That, okay. I mean, I don't, there's, it's not even... Real, real, it's not even the same characters at some point. I mean, it's it's an Elizabeth, but it's an Elizabeth that was her aunt, and I it's and there's no Jack. You know, everyone says, "Well, you know, bring her back to Jack like the first movie." That what I don't know what they were watching, but it wasn't Jack. They don't normally. That's because it's what people say, and the and the books. So it's not really about her. It's about her aunt. Right. It's the story of, right. So that's what that is. So when people say, oh, it goes back to the roots, the way it's supposed to be. And I'm like, well, then you don't know the real story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I should probably read the books, but then I'm probably going to get mad that if, if, because everyone says, oh, the books are what you got to read. And that's, that's what it's, I'm glad we're following the books again. Really? I, yeah. I know the movie has the ant um, emphasized, but she is not mentioned in all of the TV show. You are right. Very, I think one, once she's mentioned. So um, I hope I don't lose you because my computer is like shutting off and on. And I don't know what's like, or my streaming system is acting weird. Um, before we go any further, we have this question I want to address because Clarence, we haven't heard from you in a while. Clarence, listen. Lucas, the character of Lucas or Chris, the actor, absolutely positively did not leave the show. I can guarantee that Chris, the actor, is excited and waiting to hear about season 12 because he personally said that to me. And um, if you haven't had a chance to see that, I did an interview like was it around Christmas time? Yes. And Chris popped on and he talked. He was very generous with his time and he is hoping and can't wait 
he makes a joke and says he's unemployed, but they all say that. <laughs> and um, as for the character of Lucas, he's there. He's got a great storyline this season coming up, has a bit of a mystery to it. So stay tuned. He did not leave the show. Um, and uh, Minnie, Lucas did leave the show. No, he didn't, dear. He she did corrected not. it later. She corrected it later. Didn't leave the show. Okay, good. Uh, and Robin, I have to put this up because it's always about me. Rob, <laughs> Chris McNally interview was amazing, Roxanne. Robin, I kind of did nothing but sit back and let Chris do his thing. He was just walking <laughs> away, having a good time. That's the easiest kind of thing when they just sit back and talk. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I suck it all in. <laughs> Best way to do it. Yes. And Christina is saying that um, he is loving his new arc in season 11. If um, anyone is here and you are a Chris McNally fan, we have a Chris McNally um, fan page too. Yeah. All right. Come on. Tell us, you said, tell me what your favorite season is. I'm going to hear. Um, season four. I, I love this. The beginning of it, the Christmas episode with the peddler mm -hmm. that was, was, he was so intent on giving you what you need not what you want yes he he hit everything it was so perfect and i still cry every time it comes on i mean when when he heaves that ball up and it and it you know goes into a fireworks and then it starts snowing because jack said no nope, it's not going to snow there's no clouds and you know peddler makes it snow mm -hmm. I, it's just it's just a great episode and now, go, go ahead. ahead i'm sorry no you go, go ahead. ahead no i was going to ask you a question jog my memory for me is is this the same exact episode, the Christmas episode where we first see the tree? Is this when they introduce yes. the giving tree? And uh, yeah, Rosemary and, Jay and uh, Lee get back from their honeymoon, mm -hmm. and she goes, "We got to get rid of that tree in the middle." And you know, obviously, Elizabeth is not happy. So um, yeah, that was it. And that's where yes. uh, Cody got Cody got Dasher because. Um, Dasher can't, you know, I, Dasher didn't sign up for this. He, I got to, I got to leave him here. And Cody wanted a dog. I, I'm t it's, it's just, everything just fell, fell together. And, and the paprika that, that Andrea, uh, Faith, Faith wanted for the, for the, the God awful shepherd's pie. Um, and, but he, he's, I don't have any, but you know, Elizabeth must have some. And so then they bonded over that. I mean, just the whole concept of that, of that, of that one episode was wonderful I and then know. it goes on to uh well, one of my, my favorite quote um bad things happen when good people do nothing that was when henry turned to his old evil ways and got in with wyatt uh what's his name uh, the railroad ray wyatt. Yeah. yeah ray wyatt and had her fired and um you know they got him that got her back because Cody did good things and, you know, cause he always told us good things happen if, or bad things happen if good people do nothing. So I, I love that. Quote. I have a t-shirt that says it on it. Oh, you love I bought, it that much. I nice. bought it from, I think I got it from the, whatever the edify. I thought they had okay. it. Okay. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the whole, the whole concept with Ray Wyatt. And then when he, he got caught, um, you know, just being an idiot. So, I, and you know, so, you know, he, then he's out and now we get to go on to season five, but I can't even remember what the Christmas one is on season five. It's Jack not being there and then coming back. The oh, thing. that's right. That's right. Any surprises. Yeah. He surprises her. Yeah. Right. Um, Jay Bishop says, love the peddler Christmas show. My favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think, um, that all of the Christmas shows are the writing is always exceptional. Right. And it's funny because it, it holds it's, it's self-contained, even though it can leak out into the shows, right. like the series rather, but um, they're beautifully written each time. I mean, it, right. each time. well, in the end of this one, it's Jack taking, taking Elizabeth to the Mounty ball that's in the saloon because they couldn't get away. I know. And, and again, the peddler has the has the little music box. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Yep. So that they dance to. You know, Edify did a series of cards. I get them all the time because I use them so much. And there are these glossy photos, stills that they have. And one they have it of them in dancing in the ball. That's one of them. So beautiful. I yeah. love it. 
Yeah. Very, yeah. very beautiful. So we've got your favorite season and you also shared one of your favorite quotes. Who would be like your old time favorite character from whatever? It could be more than one. Who's, who are your favorites? I, I really liked Aaron. I liked Elizabeth. Um, I think only be, maybe because I'm a teacher. I was a teacher and I, and I, it's fun to watch her interact with her kids. I uh, say, so yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. so it's, I mean, it's fun to see that because, and I think it's, she's portrayed pretty, pretty, you know, correctly. I mean, she's, you know, she, especially at that time, you know, you, you've got to take care of your kids and, and she does a great job of that. And so, and I, and probably, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, um, I, I'll say Lucas just because those two together were perfect. And I love the way Lucas showed up with his little, his little trick. Does he do that for real? Can he do that? I don't Does think he, so. He do I, that? That it was, was a part he, they, he learned to do. Yeah. No, you don't learn to do. If you learn to do that, you're doing pretty good. Someone else did that for him. <laughs> um, so that's an interesting question that I like to ask when I say couple, I don't necessarily always mean like a couple. Cause I don't like when they couple up everyone, but maybe a screen partner, people that share a lot of time together. Like for instance, one of my favorites is when, uh, is Elizabeth with, um, Abigail. I thought they were dynamic together. Right. I mean, from the very beginning, very, very beginning, they, they had great chemistry on screen. My net, my new favorite is, um, I love Lucas and, um, Ben's mm -hmm. part Hickam. Oh, okay. Those two together on the screen are hilarious. They They're were so good. You and we never really got to see them interact before until this past season. It's it's one of the few things that I love about season ten, which we will get to. So again, you said you, you like the characters. Do you have like a like a couple that you like that you feel are dynamic? Well, I you when you when you brought up Abigail when she left when they, she had to leave, it was interesting how they immediately. Um, paired up Elizabeth and, and Rosemary and it, it, for the longest time you know she didn't like Rosemary mm -hmm. and she'll never wear a red dress ever and then Rosemary got her to wear a red dress but I mean so I mean their their chemistry is really good and I and it started out as horrible she's living right next door to me seriously I just I loved it. so I mean and that was season four so that's I mean that's mm -hmm. everything kind of happened then um, I agree with that yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, mean, I think their 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 combination is good, and I and Henry, I I'm so torn with him. He's he he went from the worst person in the world to, and I think I think that the the turning point started in season four at the. Um, at the, when they, he came to the celebration, but Abigail went up because the peddler said, you know, do you need anything special? Oh, I got a friend and he's, he goes, oh, I know who Sourpuss is. And he looks like he just needs a friend. So she went up there and she talked to him and got him to understand what was needed. And I need you just as much as you need me. And, you know, so, and then he shows up at the, I mean, that's again, so that's when he started to turn around and then Ray Wyatt came in and it was all over. So then he turned into an idiot again. So, Which is such human nature. You take a step forward and two back. Right. You right. know what I mean? I have to say that what an interesting out of all of the characters that have been on there from the beginning. And, and there's not, not all of them, but there's like quite a few, but from the very beginning, all the way through, I find his story arc to be like the most powerful one like right. we've been through so much with him and I feel like whoever the writers are in their heart that's their favorite because they've paid so much attention to it each season you know right. what I mean and we've right. we've gone through different showrunners but it's tucked away in somebody's heart that's connected to that. Like maybe yeah. Brian Birds, right? Or maybe but Michael Landon. Or the two of them. Michael. Yeah. Yeah, especially Michael. The two of them together because that's their thing. You know, that who did you, who did you say is coming back to help with that helped with season eleven? One of the 
directors, producers? I didn't say that. I did not say that there was a rumor and they were hoping that um, uh, Alfonso would come back yeah. to be like a person who oversaw it. That's not for me, though. No, that's, that's just a rumor. Rumor that was out. And I honestly do not have any insight into that. But I wanted to share some things that people are saying, like they're along with what we're talking about, and then we can move forward. Brian is saying, hi, Brian. He did a great job last week, didn't he? Yeah, he, he was did. good. Yeah, good guest. Brian, you like Nathan too much, though. That's way too much. Brian, <laughs> it's okay. Hey, don't you listen to her. <laughs> Cody's scene defending little Emily was a real favorite of mine. He didn't allow a bad thing to continue happening. Yes. How come I don't remember that? What's oh, that? What's that? that? That's part of, remember when they were trying, the kids were, the kiddos were trying to continue that happening, all having good standing up for each other and, and um, what the heck goes, I forget the whole full storyline, but that was a big thing with the kids. I can't. It, he part of the Christmas. Brian, elaborate on that so we can, we can share more, but I, I remember it. Yeah, um, help me, Brian. Help us out. Help me, Brian. Help, help. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. We have, um, I wanted to answer some things. Clarence, we're going to, we're going to answer this question for you. He wanted to know what happened to the spinoff when Hope calls. I think what happened is that um, it was just too costly of a production. I don't know that it was even filmed in Canada. I know that at sometimes parts of it weren't, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't have the full answer, but maybe if it were my guess, it had a lot to do with the pandemic and money, you know, maybe it didn't have the ratings like it should have. Well, and then one by one, they, the, the, the actors started, you know, going, branching off into other stuff. So. And they had to, because there was such a large, long gap with the pandemic and it kind right. of like, they were able to do the Christmas um, episode, which was very nice. It was a two-parter. They did it. They were done. Which, when I say very nice, because I didn't like the show, I didn't really watch it, but I did watch parts of it, but I did watch the Christmas show. But when I say very nice, it was nice that they could sort of, we could revisit and then they could shut it down. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think a bit of closure. Trying, I, think, I, I think they were trying to bring it back oh. and they thought if they bring Abigail and Jack back, everyone will watch and it's going to make everybody, you know, but I don't think it, it didn't get what they wanted. I don't think. Okay. You know, Jack I had a, what, 25 seconds on, on the screen. And he, and he, the actor even said that he could never come back for his role unless it was done correctly. And how do you do it correctly? If he died, you right. know what I mean? You have to be careful. So coming in as an angel or, or in someone's dream is, is one thing. Right. Although you don't know. I don't know, but this new showrunner, they just might come up with no, something. Please don't. Could you imagine Nathan yes. and Elizabeth about to walk down the aisle and the door's open? And there it is. Jack is back. <laughs> and who opens the door for Jack? Lucas. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing y'all. Okay, Barbara says, my mom was a teacher and one in a room in a in a one room schoolhouse grades one to twelve. Oh, wow. Ooh, in Canada in the early 1940s. So teachers always in are interesting to me. Especially Aww. one room, especially a one room schoolhouse. That would be one good. to twelve. Well, one that's kind of Elizabeth's, right? But right. They, uh, yeah. And Did you Rob notice all the new kids this year. The, I the, love the it new, though. There's I, all I, new kids. Yeah. I want them to have kids. some new kids. Yeah. Right. Yes, um, some of the screen partners are fabulous. Henry and Lucas are a great scene, have great scenes too along the way, as well as Henry and Elizabeth. Um, yes, yes. I, I feel like though the this I felt like that Ben and Chris kind of lit up the screen for me. They I, it was something fun and different, and it caught me off guard. When I, they were sitting in the saloon, all three of them were and he goes, Yeah, I I, I do calisthenics and and you know, and I I I, I do I, weightlifting. And Chris looked at him like, "Oh yeah, sure you do." <laughs> his face, and he was checking out his his arm. But you know, Ben is beautifully fit. I mean, that man right. is ripped. He yeah. really is. Like he works out. He does all kinds of stuff. And I remember one time that I really paid attention was 
Um, it was funny. It was Kevin McGarry doing this amazing. Paul Green does amazing interviews with his friends. And it was this amazing just hanging out kind of interview. If anyone has had an opportunity to see it. And Kevin is eating his breakfast. <laughs> He's, he just got done working out. He's talking about Kayla. Kayla pops her head in. She just has her hair wet from a shower. Right. And they're just talking away. And they they laugh and they mention Ben. And he's like, have you seen Ben? And, his, <laughs> and he's so, and I'm like, Ben's really that buff. So I went and I was looking up some of his pictures and I'm like, wow, that man really does work out. I mean, he's you can't like, a tell it, nut. you can't tell it in costume though, because he's not meant to, you right, know, right. But he, he really is a health nut and they managed to work it into the storyline and it was hilarious. It's it was funny. so cute. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, I know. I liked it. Florence and Molly have always been um, my early faves. Yes, Arlene. They are. They are cute together. I love them together. Yes. Yeah, Florence drove me nuts at the beginning, though. I mean, she was one of us. I know. But I mean, everything, you know, everything that happened. But we can't do that. There's no way we're going to get that done. Oh, Florence, would you just let it go? We're going to get it done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved it. So um, what about like storyline wise? Like, what was one of your favorite storylines that we've, I mean, we've had so many. What did you love? I like the storyline in season one with um, the little girl who couldn't talk. And the reason why, um, she, you know, she was supposed to go give the can uh, lunch to her dad and didn't show up. And I liked that one. But that was over really, really quick. Um, but I guess mostly the storylines, obviously season eight, um, Although, and I, the one with her, with her getting a, you know, with the writing of the book and Lucas's mom coming in. Yeah. Um, but, and then obviously season nine. So I, I, I mean, I can't, I can't deny those two at all, but. What was it about um, that relationship and that romance that you loved? Lucas. <sighs> I have so many pictures on my computer of Elizabeth and Lucas, and there is not one negative, bad look at each other ever. I mean, there's nothing. It's it's all total love. You could just see it in their eyes, and and it wasn't good enough. I I just don't. I just. Well, we don't know what. We don't know what the reason is, but you're allowed to tell us what you love. It doesn't matter. Right. Like, yeah. You're so I, I agree with you. I saw a lot of chemistry. Um, I feel like I've watched Hallmark forever. I grew up on Hallmark, We're Hallmark junkies in my family. <laughs> and I, I love, I love the two of them. I love the two actors together. I've never seen them in anything else. Right. At, but only as Lucas and Elizabeth together. And I have to say that my first favorite romantic duo, and I've, you've heard me say this before, is Claire and Jamie on Outlander. I just happened to see something flash by and I saw them doing a photo shoot and I'm like, those two people. They're have, that's incredible. Oh my God, it's incredible. And they're never going to show season 7B. It's, it's, it's in a... It's in a pan somewhere and they're never going to put it on TV. It's Listen, like, what is going on? Hold those thoughts. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Not now. We can't. I, I'll, I will. I, will right. bust. I, I, I put you off. the. Did I throw you off the ledge right there? No, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah. But my second favorite couple. And here it comes because it could be from anywhere. And I do love Republic of Doyle and the chemistry of the two main characters in Republic of Doyle. But I have to tell you that Chris and Aaron kiss and look at each other and in and in a room like no other couple ever that right. that is on hallmark i'm sorry it's like amazing to me they're electric and so and i'm like oh so we all know my theory behind all of that i'm happy we're, we're moving on with all of it but i love them i i agree with you totally agree with you well yeah. and the whole the whole time when they were together i you know the comments from tn was, you know, there's no chemistry, you know, look, you know, they don't look at each other like they love each other. They, I mean, it's like, what are you watching? Well, you've got to be watching something else. And it's yeah. look, at, look at the love that, that her and Nathan have. I'm like, again, 
What are you? He would, couldn't even ask her out on a date without tripping over himself. And he's still doing it. It's That's still how they wrote around. that character. That's how they wrote that if, character. If they're going to, if they're going to make him be with her this year, then he's got to stop being such a bumbling fool. Okay. 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 Yeah. Chris and Aaron have amazing, um, amazing energy together. And, um, Joanne is saying Chris and Aaron are phenomenal together. Even the breakup. Oh God, that, that was, that was such a, yeah. I don't even think the, I mean, the breakup was, how, how, it just happened. It's so nothing led up to it. Nothing led up to it. Okay. But we're only talking about what we love here. Yeah, so okay, Christina right. is saying that people, because that's a different, uh, we're talking about when calls the Hardys and what you love and love. And we will have an opportunity at a later date at a different time to talk about other things. <laughs> but Christina says people only see what they want to see. I don't agree with that. And, and here's why I don't agree with that. As a teacher and someone who teaches, you can, people nowadays throw around, oh, it's in my opinion. No, no. There's a difference between an opinion and disinformation and being misinformed. Right. So when we're reading a book, right? my kiddos, or we're watching the video because you have to do both. And you want to put and you want to say, oh, I think that he was, he was, um, I don't know, a clever guy. And I would say, okay, you think he's a clever guy? Now give me all of the evidence that shows that he's a clever guy. So now you got to back it up with actual things that happen, either dialogue, either, um, you know, uh, a reaction to something. We don't see what, like, back it up. You've got to back it up. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, um, I, up, up until, what is it, the last three episodes of, of 10, everything was great. I mean, so that that's the positive, you know. Every, I mean, and it, even when we got wind that something was going to happen, we all decided, no, it's not true. It's not going to happen. This is going to stay. Um, so what's his name? What's, um... Ah, uh, who's the guy that I, I talk to all the time? Um, hold on. Yeah, you do. From San Diego. Okay, hold that thought. I know who you mean. Okay. But I have a question for you. Okay. This you're you're in it already. So my question was, it what is it about season 10 that you liked or enjoyed? That's where we're going with this right now. That's the last season. So go ahead, keep going with your thought. I like the fun times they had in the hot tub. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. And then and the, and the, the kids were pissed off because they couldn't get in it because the adults wanted it. And so then they made arrangements that the kids could be in it. Um, I, the picnics they had around it, they did a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, um, Lucas and, and what's his name? Uh, little little Jacks. He, they, they were still buddies then, you know, it was still a buddy thing. At the beginning. And I, yeah. And I, and it, yeah. Well, even at the end, I mean, did my buddy win? You know, so, I mean, he still was acting like that. So, um, but yeah, I think that that's, I mean. What you liked? Yeah. And um, what else happened? I don't remember. Uh, it's, one, it's one season I haven't watched yet. I haven't watched it the second time yet. I love no. the costumes. I thought the costumes yeah. were gorgeous. Yeah. Madeline or Madeline, the, I loved the hilariousness of her relationship with Bill. Though, Like how she kept him on and how they were in sync when they were having breakfast and how he was made. Who's got their, their car parked out in front of my horse's <laughs> kitchen? Like, that was hilarious to well, me. Well, the kid, I like, the kid was funny too. I, I thought cute. he was a good kid. Yeah. 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 Lillian, I'd like to see them come back. I'm sorry. I'd like to see them come back. Yes, yes. Yeah. Lillian saying, let me ask you about the money under the fish. Lillian, I'm just clicking that off. Goodbye. <laughs> She's being a brat. What's she talking about? The salmon, the he's or he, there. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And Christina's saying, Oh, I know what you're saying, Christina. I don't, I only see people say, said people see what they want to see because some don't see the chemistry and some do only because of who you like better and or at, well, no, I know what you're saying, but here's the thing. I don't agree with that either. I don't agree with it because some it's, it, I might really enjoy a character, right? But I know the difference by me enjoying a character or liking an actor and being attractive to an actor over if there's chemistry between two people. 
And, and some people are just not honest. Like they want, they want something because they want it, not because it actually honestly fits. Right. That's why I say, show me some examples. And, and I, I want to, there's a difference between you being attracted to an actor and the, or a character, as opposed to two actors sharing space together. There's a, a huge difference, you know, like, so when, for instance, um, a, for a long time, we, um, we have a, a, a local theater uh, group and I was on the board and part of it from its inception and blah, blah, blah through the years. And when people would try out and you put them on the stage together, you can see whether they have chemistry or not, even though they all, maybe there's two girls and two guys and they all have amazing, you know, talent. They just, some are going to click, you know, more than others. Right. Yeah. All right. right. Um, I agree. Equa says Lucas's bluff of Jerome Smith and his monologue were her things that were her favorite in season 10. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And Brian says Lillian's being salty in more ways than <laughs> one. <laughs> and someone says, MD, will there be chemistry with Nathan Elizabeth? Um, we haven't had an opportunity to see them as a couple, so who knows? We don't know. We've never seen them as a couple. They've never really dated. All we've seen is her say that she, all we've seen is her always with someone else. It's either it was her husband's memory. She couldn't get out or she was engaged to Lucas. So we haven't really seen her free and loose with him. So we don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. they. I think they have to do something to pull everybody in and it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they do that yeah i would hope yeah. um we'll see we'll see um arlene says season 10 had only a few for me community dinner with minnie and lucas children working with madeline's son and lucas to fight for their rights at the hot springs and the candlelight vigil nice oh i Very forgot nice. the birth yeah there was a birth wasn't there there was a birth and it was a birth <laughs> And it was Goldie. And I was so excited that Goldie's there. And that little baby, that little, she's gorgeous. She's adorable. But she's, oh, she's walking already. How's that possible? We had a well, time. Well, they jump. do a time. There's we a time. time jump. Jump. Yeah. They tell you. They, they've they said it, too, in some of them. Of the, um, there are some little interviews here and there. Cindy says, Roxanne, you take me back to my teaching days. I would always tell my kiddos to show evidence. Please, it's a thing. It's a thing that we have to do with the kids when they're writing. Um, the. Jay Boers Boer says she like or here she likes the part where they had to um negotiate with the kids. I did too. Yeah. Um, Minnie's saying there is a connection between them. I do see it already. We can have different opinions and different observations of the same scenes. No, that's not true, Minnie. Um, th that's absolutely not true. I mean, that's because people are connected to an actor. That is not the way things are written, the way things are directed. Um, for instance, you could see um, Kayla and Kevin. I've watched other movies they've been in, and I thought, no chemistry. There's However, chemistry. when Kayla is Fiona, and when Kevin is Nathan, and those two get together in a scene in those parts chemistry because she's itchy and he's like really he's exasperated by her and they make great chem i mean she rips out of his hand and she's pacing what he was eating he's like looking around or the time where she had to go and tell um walden wyman or whatever like like she wanted him to be arrested she marched in and she basically said to him look i have to do your job he's like okay like settle down let me you know let me go get him you know like absolute great that chemistry yeah yes yeah. yeah. Yeah, when and they she, weren't. She grabbed that that piece of. Part of me. That when he, she grabbed that piece of cake. Butter cake. He, he goes, you know, I you, you know I nibble when I'm when I'm nervous, and he goes, yeah, I know. So I'm like, yeah, that, know, right? that was those two saying it. That wasn't the two characters. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. I know, I know. So um, let's see. Um, this is true. Oh yes, the baby looks a lot like both of them. They did great casting. They did. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm at excited. least it's a girl now. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, they wish they'd bring back Ar Arthur for Fiona. I'm not a big fan of pairing up everyone, I'm not a fan of that. That's a soap opera to me, you know. Yeah, we don't want yeah. that. I, I'm, I'm okay with them not pairing up, but 
they seem to have something like that could be, you know, but who knows where that's going. All right. I have a question. One more favorite for you. One more all, favorite. All the merch. Yes. Of all the merchandise that's out there from hoodies to mugs to puzzles, to note cards, to DVDs with bloopers or whatever. What's your favorite? What do you like? All the merchants, umbrellas, socks. I, I don't care if I get wet. So umbrellas, I don't care. Um, but I really like the, the bloopers and the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I, wish they, I wish they would do more. They're, they don't do very many. Um, and of course I like I mean, I have a friend that has one of these machines and she's made a lot of shirts for me. So, and it's like, everyone says, how many of those do you have? I went, I, I don't know. You're just going to have to just, I'm going to wear them all. So just deal with it. That's um, cute. Yeah. I, um, well, that's nice. I love it. And I, that one I love. Um, yeah. What color is that? Like a blue, a navy blue? It's navy. Yeah. Like, navy with then, white. Well, it's, it all, it was white, but it kind of, because like a, a light blue, a bluish, a bluish grayish tint to it. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of different merch. One of my ultimate favorite though, are my two ornaments that Hallmark put out. It's the one of the church slash schoolhouse and the other one of the tower. They're porcelain. I love I them. Have them. I, I think I have them. Yeah, I, I do. love them. Yeah. They're out in my, my office has all my favorite things all year round and they're out. And the other thing that I love is I love this mug. Now, the reason why I love the mug is because of its size, but it is, it is thick. I mean, I break, I have over the years broken a lot of the mugs that I've been given, but this one, this one like really holds up. It's, it's good quality. It's a good investment. I'm glad that I, I've had it for like, I don't know, three, four years now. When I was in, Mystic Village, Mystic mm -hmm. Village in Connecticut. Um, there was a there was a store that did all these mugs and stuff, and uh, they I got it. I, I purchased a Yeti and had him print when calls the heart on it. But I should have looked at it a lot qu closer because it was a real small print. And yeah, and, but well, and, they do have that type of merchandise on um, the Edify store. Edify, they, do they? They do. Yes, they do. And I'm interested in what people hear like, um, and I'm going to post some things up because I have some little fun stuff that I talked at great length with Elliot about. Maybe things that people don't realize. Carrie says, I don't know why they didn't put Fiona and Nathan together. They would have been great together. So I always thought this for a while. People like, oh, because those two said they don't want to be. Who cares what they said? You don't get a say. <laughs> like the actors don't have says like that. Right. But I thought that the characters were like, had like that kind of a good chemistry. And I also liked that um, my name, her name, like I'm looking at everybody's name. Fiona is sort of like a grown up version of Allie. So they could have connected. I like the idea of them. I thought that they were fun. I like them from the, <laughs> the beginning, but I really do enjoy Fiona's character. How, she, how, when she first came on, she has a one, she has two wonderful things that, that touched my heart. One is a conversation with um, with Carson, where he says, you're a person of value, stick up for yourself. And that's what makes her stay. And the other conversation is when she's in the middle of the street and she does her exchange with Florence and Florence said, thank you for giving me a chance. And, and they did, they gave, they gave each other little gifts. I love that. I remember talking with um, both of the actresses and both of them said they, they were had real tears. Like it kind of caught them off guard and they were in the moment and they really had real tears, which, which I love. Like they didn't have to That's force cool. those tears. <laughs> well, next time you talk to Edify and what's his name? Uh, Elliot. Elliot. I, I even taught, I even contacted him. I, I'd like a, a new calendar. I got, yes. old, I have old calendars. Yes. But, but I'm like, it's like, do you understand how many people would buy these calendars? I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. I got a story for you. Okay. okay. And I, Elliot shared, shared this with me. It also has to do with the beautiful coloring books. I have many of them and I've given them away too. And Rona say, because she likes them because it relaxes her. So, um, I talked to Elliot about this because 
um, we were talking about socks when everybody wanted socks, 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 because that cutie patootie would make them for you, right? The the fan, the uh, young fan for Wayne Calls the Heart. He would make them and it was so much fun. And then they came up with socks, but the socks just said Wayne Calls the Heart on it like this, like you're okay. And then they, and then he's like, you all wanted socks and they weren't like going crazy for them. And I talked to Elliot about some other things. And I said, Elliot, they want the faces on them. And he's like, you know, let me tell you about, um, he said, let me tell you about, and we'll get to Brian's conversation, Brian's piece there. He said, let me tell you about photographs, the coloring book. He said, the coloring book. He said, it was so difficult to do because their face is their brand. So you have to go to all of the actors, ask them if all of those parts are okay. They have to sign off on it. If it's not, they have to redo. It's a lot of work. And I think that happens with the calendars as well. But look and, at all the calendars that are out by, on calendar.com. You can get almost every every TV show ever made. They have, they have them all. It's like, why can't you? I mean, they got Outlander. Outlander's got calendars. I know, but they're not real. They're illegally done. You can't. That, um, they're, they're all illegally done. So anything that you're purchasing, if it doesn't come through Edify, is illegally done. That's copyright infringement. So that's why Edify does it correctly. Anybody does it correctly. You got to sign off. It's a big deal for them. So I think that that might be why they haven't done it one in a while. But my hope is that when, if, and when, when everything comes to an end, when they do come to an end, I would hope that they would do one last calendar for us. Do you know what right. I mean? With, with everything yeah. on it. So that's the, that's the behind the scenes story that I wanted to share. He was like, it's a nightmare. And he goes, I'm not putting faces on those socks. Glenn calls the hearts on those socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm faces on yeah, I know it was like too much for them. You know, Brian says, this is, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure where it's going. I saw a piece of it. Alfonso Marino created Nathan Lucas and Fiona. He did. And he mentioned that the intention was to pair Fiona uh, with the character um, Elizabeth didn't choose. And I did hear that. I also wow. bringing up, thank you, Brian, bringing up Alfonso. It was this obscure interview and I, it's there and I will find it for people because I don't like to bring up stuff and then pretend it was there. I like to have proof. <laughs> I wanted to, yes, it, it was from Kate. Um, Cade used to do those wonderful socks for free. You didn't get charged because he wasn't allowed to charge. It was like a, a fun thing he did. Okay. So Brian, back to this, there was an interview with Alfonso and Alfonso, um, he explains the characters that he created and he talks specifically about Lucas and he talks about why in that season they had Elizabeth ask Lucas. And I talked about this before to dance and not um, Nathan. And he said, he used the word moxie because he had, like, he pursued her. He showed an interest. And she was like, okay, thank you. You know, and there's something for saying that. They even were going to have them kiss. And then he was like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that because it's too soon and we want to honor her, you know, trying to cross over into the dating and letting go of her love for Jack, which was her, her life, you know, forever loving him. You know, he didn't say lifetime. And then he said that they would have, there, he makes a comment about why Nathan gives her a look and she looks at him and it, and, and I'm paraphrasing and I will find it. So I'm not putting words in people's mouths here, but it was more or less as if it was her looking. It wasn't because it was Nathan. It was like a nod to the whole Mountie. Oh my goodness, Jack. I, I chose him. I smiled. I want to do it. And then, oh, I'm not sure. And it was supposed to be cleared up in the next season right away that the whole idea of Nathan being someone that she was seeing Jack in and she was going to be moving into a different direction. And he, he explains it beautifully. And then for whatever reason, they decided to go on with the triangle and whatever stuff and blah, blah, blah. And you know how we're all that went the rest is history, but um, you know, whatever that's, that's, well, and that was, that was one of the first times where Nathan and I, all I can say is when he, when he makes those faces at her, like he's, he's upset. He looks like a seventh grader, you know, that just got, you know, 
the, the seventh grade dance and he got kicked to the side. And so he's taking his little tail and walk, going home. And, but he had that, that whole look on his face quite a few times. And it was like, grow some, just do, you know, if you want her bad enough, ask her, quit, quit him and hawing around. But, but that's how they write. It's not a real human. You know what I mean? They're writing yeah. that character to behave that way. They were writing him to, he, they wrote him. That's why I crack up when someone said that Lucas was immature. And I'm like, no, oh, no. But Nathan was, Nathan was a brand new dad. He got thrown in. He, he would, had moved around when he comes. He's like, he just lets his door, like his niece run off and do whatever. And then he <laughs> didn't want to believe it. And they had to call him on the carpet. And then when he doesn't get his way, when he's mad at Elizabeth, he doesn't even show up for the conference. He's all hurt. So he doesn't go to his child's conference. We went you know, like, instead. Pardon me. They went fishing instead. Right. Well, I'm just saying that they, they showed him mature as time right. went on. They did. Right. They did show him mature. But um, where were we going with this? I don't even remember. When it, you were saying, oh, that's how he's written. Just and I think sometimes when he's written, I there's all kinds of people that watch the show, right? So when that happens. Sometimes I think they, it's not the women, they make the men immature and it's off putting to me. Like they, they, they don't do it realistically. Like I get being awkward, but they, like you said, make him act like he's a seventh grader. Kevin McGarry could pull off being awkward and not being a seventh grader, but that's how they write it. So right. that's how he is. The same with, I, I think um, the same with how Hickam behaves. As the same thing. Hickam yeah. has an innocence about him and I love it, but to hide with a bouquet of flowers like <laughs> this behind what grown man does that? I don't care yeah. how shy you are. No grown man does that. A, a, right. a 10 year old doesn't do that. Okay. Right. Maybe a 10 year old back in that day did 10 year old nowadays. No, cause I spend lots of hours with 10 year olds. <laughs> okay? They don't nowadays, yeah. but to see, so to me that suspends me out of, the like being sucked into the storyline and I look and I'm like why did you make him do that well and it didn't even did did it even did they end that little part of the storyline it just disappeared didn't no it? no it, it moves on who hick him when he's hiding oh no he he winds up asking may out and, uh, and with the it, flowers um not at that moment he asks her eventually though but I'm just saying there's you being like your people are like oh Nathan he's that that's how it was written for right. him to behave that way. I feel like, and and we can't pin that on one writer because we're talking about different seasons here. I feel like they don't know how to portray or uh, a male who is shy or, or nerdy or fumbling or, or awkward correctly. They, they, they actually insult my intelligence is what it is. They insult my intelligence when right. they do it that way. Yeah. You yeah. see, May Sue gave, uh, gave uh, Ben a kiss it says, you're it, tag, you're it. Tag, yeah, tag, yeah, they're having a fun time. That, yeah, that's that was interesting. Cute. Yeah. Kathy says, Roxanne, I missed uh, yesterday's live and I was sad to hear your band. If your podcast is, is to is very professional, is that why SU and JLJ get access to BB and LS actors? <laughs> okay. So, so, okay, let's talk about this. One, I say I'm banned because, um, I've had actors come on for other things and say, I just got a phone call. I'm not allowed to talk about one calls the heart. And I'm like, yeah, well, we never were anyway. So we're good and we're in the clear. So I've had more than one tell me that. I have reached out for Lindsay to be a guest on my um, podcast. I even spell, I asked for her to be on before we even, when we first met her and she was going to, and there was, they started filming earlier and they're like, we're sorry, we can't do it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no problem. We'll get her. I, um, I've asked multiple times and I even sent what I would ask ahead of time. And I was not even asking or going in the direction of what went on. I wanted to talk about her hero theory when she was talking with Marg and, and the people of, um, the official Hardys. She early on, she talked to, I stopped. She talked about <laughs> the, um, she was talking, I'm hijacking your, in, your interview here That's too. Okay. But I, she was talking about the hero and how, uh, who's a hero and what a hero really is. And I thought, I love that. And there was so much, there were so many different hero themes and different kinds of heroes. Even the kids were heroes that I wanted that to be what we chatted about. 
They didn't even respond. They didn't even respond to my follow-up. So I'm banned. Now, as who's, for who's SU, who's SU and JLJ? Suspenders on button. Let's talk about uh, that. They do not have access to um, all of the actors. I don't, I don't, they, they don't. I mean, I know they have access to Kevin because Kevin wants to have access with them. I mean, have, give them access. Um, and of course, Kayla, that's like a, a, a package deal, but they did have Lindsay come on and she agreed to be on theirs, but she would not come on mine, which I thought was sad because I, I, I'm dating. Pardon me. Are you intimidating? No, I, I don't know what it is, but I have to say this. I have never trashed and, and people can watch whatever's on. I've never trashed an actor and I never, and I have trashed writing and I feel like I can because that's writing like if you're not going to keep to the storyline or you're going to do x y and z it's a different thing I've never said because I don't know you're terrible writers they they I uh, can uh, talk about their other writing nothing I've never done anything like that so I don't know what their decision is I can't speak for them and well your mom like I'm not gonna I can't cry over it what's now, JLJ? um I'm not sure what JLJ is. don't like acronyms. Okay. I don't know what JLJ is. Kathy, JLJ, what's JLJ get access to Brian Bird, Lindsay. That's their choice. Now, the um, the official Hardys get access to everyone. And that started. So I always think that's funny because they've had a pot, they've had the opportunity to have a podcast forever. Now they suddenly had one all of a sudden um last season. And um, well, not 10 for nine. That's because um, John Tinker, I heard him say, oh, oh that's a whole other story. Yeah, John Tinker say, hey, I am going to have everybody on for you. Even I'm going to have the the cast and the crew, the people that take care of costumes and this. That. And he did. He told them, come on. And they all did. The only person that didn't was someone who never will be interviewed no matter what. And you know who that, that is? is? Henry. But, well, it's well, what's his name? His name is not his character is Henry. So I love it because he, he Martin, Martin Cummins, Martin, he's just yeah. like hilarious. <laughs> so you never saw him anywhere on the interview. So right. that's my long winded story. But it's not a big deal. I mean, we're still I'm still doing stuff. James Lott Jr. He's he's been James has been for years, even before anybody has had them on and done stuff with them. Does he do anything with Outlander? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I thought I, I thought I saw him talking about Outlander once. Yeah, twice. He Maybe. might. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I, the the official Hardys, whatever they're called, they banned me a long time ago. I mean, I I I made the comment that um, Allie was being, you know, he she was being. Um, what it controlling and trying to and I and they said you can't do that to a nine year old and I went I can't do what and I bam gone. <laughs> well, that's just a character. That's not necessarily. Well, I, 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 I didn't. Say, I didn't say anything about her. I just the yeah. character. They didn't care. Apparently, um, he James does all kinds of goodies. He does all kinds of stuff. They're saying, which that's wonderful. Arlene says I don't trust writers, directors, and producers who don't do live um, interviews to explain their decisions or reasons for certain storylines. And that is true. That is why sometimes I sign off on something and I tell them we will not answer any questions that are not on the topics that we have here because people don't want to be taken off guard. You know, it is live. So they don't want to be put on the spot, held their feet to a fire. I have to tell you that most people that come on are nervous wrecks. And oh, yes, sure. even though they're actors, they are nervous because they're and afraid they're, they're going to say something or, or just a general. And when they're done, they're like, oh my gosh, like their backs <laughs> are sweating or they're like, or, you know, I'm like, why, why, you know, right. it'll be fun. You know, just calm down. It'll be fun. I'm not sweating. Well, you know, this has <laughs> no. been even in that hoodie of yours out in frozen Illinois. <laughs> it's supposed to be 59 tomorrow. Oh, all right. And then, and then down to the 40s again on the rest of the week. It's stupid. So there's a lot to love with When Calls the Heart. I, I enjoy hearing all the different perspectives. It's okay for, this is why I was like, no, 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 when it comes to opinion. You can like who you like. It doesn't, I mean, 
everybody's attracted to something different. I get that. But you have to have an honesty in what you're you're looking at. Like right. you can't say, you know, oh, those two were meant to be. It's been written all along. Or, oh, those two are enemies. There's all along. And I'm like, okay, show me. Show me all of the evidence. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of people on, on my site and you've seen them um, mm -hmm. and, and, all, and all the other sites that they they're refusing to watch now. Uh, you know, did you did, did you refuse to watch when it happened, when when the opposite happened in season eight? You know, it's like you complained about that and now it's happening now. And I I don't I. I like the show too much not to watch. I love the show and I can't wait until April shows up. And, and we get to watch it. And you know, not only that, you get Aaron's new show. You've got, I, what are, there's about three things happening at the same time, including women's basketball. Um, so I, I, I hope they don't conflict. Really hope they don't conflict. But um, I just, I, I'm, I'm not going to stop watching this. I mean, I, I, I haven't stopped. I told you earlier, I haven't stopped watching anything because of how the storyline went because I was mad. I, mm -hmm. you know, I might not, I might get tired, not specifically how the storyline, but if it's getting to the point where like, I don't want to watch this anymore. I, but I, I want to watch this. I want to see where they take it. I want to, I think they still have to try to pull everybody in. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. But I, I just, I think people are making, I, I think, they should give it a chance. At least watch the first couple episodes. Did you want to know? Um, there's such a grand passion for this show, just like there was a grand passion for um, Game of Thrones. I mean, people were passionate. People got mad. Who had teams? You know, all this, all this stuff. But my my point is that, and they're in the writing. There's, no, I'm sorry, Hallmark plug your ears. I love you. But there is no comparison with the writing from those two shows. We're, we're talking about, but, but the fans were passionate, right? For years and into it. Um, when it comes to this show and, and, and what fans, and, and this was also what happened with Game of Thrones, the directors, the cast and the crew were very hands on with the fans very interactive, appreciate it, but it smacks them in the face because as soon as something goes away, a, a majority doesn't, then they're man. I'm not watching. I'm not going to watch live because I want the ratings to tank. I'm not watching because of this. I'm like, what do you, my, Kathy always says, why do people have to announce their departure? That's Just exactly work. right. Just don't watch. And right, you right. And do you think, is there a little uh, Nielsen box hooked up to your TV? Because you probably have no, no chance at all of, of, of getting your vote counting. That's so right. it's just like, why? I know. I know. Um, Roxanne, I love your transparency all around. Don't change. Oh, gosh, you don't know the trouble that I get in all the time, <laughs> no matter where I am. <laughs> Kathy. Oh, Kathy, I don't like Hallmark now encouraging teams for the way home. Don't ruin my show. Kathy, I, I made a comment. So um, the way there's home. Teams? There's yes, teams for the way watch, home. Watch. It's, listen, I won't even allow that to happen on my page, on the page. So I feel like sending a message to the publicist friends and saying, take a note from the when calls the heart. Okay, so back to this. They have an official um, Instagram account and it's the way home Hallmark channel one. And they have this picture and they did Elliot and Thomas um, and Kat and which team are you? And I wrote under there and I said, no, <laughs> there are no teams. You will kill the fandom. There are no teams. None. We have one, 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 one in 1804 and one in 2024. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a, let's no. Robin, I love the show too. And we should all be able to voice our opinions and still be kind and respectful as it's absolutely still possible. It is, it is, it is, it is. But sometimes people say things as their opinion and it's misinformation. Well, that's just my opinion. No, someone so didn't say that. This is exactly what they said. Look at the closed captioning. Well, that's not how I took it. It's just my opinion. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I'm not complaining. That's just my opinion. Yeah. No, no, you're complaining. And if you, if, if it's perceived as complaining by one or two people, it's complaining. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, All right. Minnie said the national championship of the women's game will be on April 7th. Oh, no. <laughs> so not sure how I can see both that night. It's okay. You're going to, you're going to watch the championship live. How could you not? And you're going to DVR or record the, um, you're right. I, I, will, I will, I will record both of them. Yes. <laughs> Maybe picture in picture, but if, if, Iowa, and I'm I'm from Illinois. I'm not from Iowa, but if Iowa is in the championship game, I will be focused on that. I, I can't believe Caitlin Clark is such an incredible player. And I coached basketball for 25 years. So I, you know, it's just like, man, she has just done so much with basketball. It's wonderful to watch. So all right. I can't um, believe it's the same night. I would watch the premiere to support my favorite actors, but I've dropped off watching Hallmark quite a lot because of these one-sided promos. And I feel the division more now than ever with Hallmark. Arlene, I wanted to address that because I, I wanted to think about that in all honesty. Um, I have to say the promos are not one-sided because I remember when we, cause we were fed some, I was like, what you got left for us? You were fed us with so much. When season nine was coming out, we got so much of Elizabeth with Lucas. We got them hanging up in that balloon and them having their conversation. We got her talking about him in the, in the school with um, Rosemary. We got, we saw a flash of him with, um, little Jack and we were, uh, we saw him walk into her house and we're like, he's in the house. Like we were freaking out and we saw a flash of Nathan and what might happen to him. And we saw a flash of what, of him looking up at May as she comes down the stairs and it was all dark, but it was just a flash. So I'm sorry. It's whoever Elizabeth is with and it could be, and I'm not saying it's always a love interest, whatever is mainly about her, we will get most of the promos. So we got to be fair there. We got to be fair. Well, and I know that you're going to yell at me and argue with me. All right. The, the, <laughs> so you're ready. I, but every time all the promos with Nathan show him as a bumbling goof, he, he almost knocks a, a, a plant over. She walks in with her new hairstyle and he goes, you look great. I'm like, you can't even say that right. Is There's it? a cute one, though, when she's sitting on the step. And it's a repeat because we've seen this before. And he sits next to her. I don't know if everybody got to see it because I don't know if it's. She, if she it's, says, I'm glad I'm glad you came or something. No, he says something about it being beautiful. And he looks and he's like, oh. I know. And then he looks. But so that's cute. That one's a cute. He's not fumbling there. One. Yeah. He said, I'm late. And then she goes, I'm glad you came back. Yeah. And isn't it beautiful? And he goes, yeah. And she kind of went. However, um, we've been told E and N will take it slow. I don't see how that's happening because the promos don't show that at all. Promos can fool you on certain things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know they can. Yes. There are a lot of similar scenes. We've seen a lot of recycling. We have. We have. Yep. Yeah. Are we going to recycle Nathan and, and, and Jack's scenes? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll see what goes down. Grammy Rose says, because of health issues, I have to stay away from stress. Don't know <laughs> why exactly, but the new storyline stresses me out. I just got so obsessed with the show. I understand, Grammy. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. This has been fabulous. Everyone, thank you for sharing. Deb, thank you for spending time with me. Uh, I love it. I know. We'll say goodnight. And next week is going to be so controversial because Nikki is coming on. She is Nikki from X. I have to tell you, in my opinion, what caught my attention about her is she writes beautifully. She is very well written. You know how you're well spoken? I'm sure she is. Her writing, she's a good writer. And I love her thoughts. And she's like, specific and digs things out and she's if she were in my class and she said my students clever she'd have ever, i'd be like Woohoo, i love this child a a for you right <laughs> i'd have to match it up to the rubric to make it and an earn an a but anyway nikki's coming on i cannot wait i'm very excited is she the fan fiction she does write fan fiction so we could talk about that we have not talked about that with my hardy peeps so i'm excited for her to come on yeah, I don't do fan fiction. I have I, I kind of stay away from it too. So you, I don't. 
don't have to do fan fiction and you have, you do, you have your page. Um, mm -hmm. You have your um, When Calls the Heart page. Um, and I have to say, I was excited to have Brian on because Brian has a different perspective than many of the people that connect with me. But I wouldn't mind, like, I would love to have Teresa on. She is very well written. She has her blog that comes out and an email. And um, I do know that one time when she was on, some of her followers were upset and they felt like she wasn't treated correctly. And I was like, I would never, I hope I'd, and I wrote to her and she's like, no, no, no. I, she, I was like, okay. Cause there was multiple people on that day. And, um, and I don't want people to feel outnumbered, but I would like if someone is super, super crazed over Rosemary and um, Florence and, and they, no, they were, <laughs> there is a team. They have beautiful posts about them. And I was like, ladies, could you please come on? And they're like, no, we're camera shy. And I'm like, mm. so I'm no. always trying to reach out, trying to find other people to come on and you can have your opinion. It's, it's about you. So I'm not going to cut you down. I'm not, I'm not going to cut Are you, you down. Are you going to find someone to take uh, Kathy's place when the, thing starts are you going to go on at your own um i started on my own and i will go on my own because there is no one that can take kathy's place well, i mean <laughs> there true. isn't but kathy are you just... watching are you watching she am i be. watching no it's kathy not. watching oh no no but i have to tell you that it's like chemistry you can't it you're not meant to Ha not everybody's meant to be co-hosts right. there's a difference between have someone coming on as your guest and i direct it and we talk and i have my hands all over this page today i'm sorry but um and we talk <laughs> <laughs> um that's a different thing oh you, but you two are funny i mean it's when you have like you, you got to be able to co-host so we don't step all over each other and sometimes when we're excited we do but we know no, there's no one else that can be my co-host like Kathy. So she's not coming on. I might have guests come on and do things with me, but I'll be solo. And I love it because I don't know how many people are going to turn in because people are like, where's Kathy? Where is she? And I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still here, even though she's I'm not. Here, I'm here. <laughs> All right, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Yes, thanks for tuning in.